I already know this is just gonna be a journey. Hey guys, it's Haley and welcome to another bookish video. Today is the start of a reading vlog? Question mark? I don't know. Okay, so this is not gonna be a typical reading vlog but I am going to be reading books and reviewing them in this video. Obviously you saw the title. I'm going to be reading the Off Campus series, probably one of the most hyped romance series ever in this video. However, I'm not going to be doing my typical reading vlog format where I kind of update you throughout my day. You're kind of reading the book with me in real time. There's a ton of B-roll. I honestly just don't have time to do reading vlogs like that all the time and I feel like with reading five books in this video, a full reading vlog with a ton of b-roll would just be entirely too long. So I came up with this concept, I don't know if it's good, you'll have to let me know in the comments if you like this or not, where I'm just going to read every book and then come back and vlog immediately after I finish or like a couple hours after I finish. So you're still getting my immediate reactions, my immediate thoughts, full reviews right after I read the book, but it's not gonna be a million hours long and take me a million hours to edit. So let me know if you like this kind of reading vlog style. Also, we're not in <laughs> my new filming location. I know I was like really excited about filming in this location and I got like a ring light and it was like a thing. Okay, no, that's canceled. I feel like I tried to get too fancy for my own good. I hate it. <laughs> Every time I sit down to film there, I'm like, I hate it so much. I don't know. I think I only liked it with the Christmas tree and without the Christmas tree, it just looks like bald. It looks incomplete. I don't know, I gotta figure something else out, but for now, we're back on the floor like we used to be because this is where I belong. So, with all of that intro out of the way, hello, welcome to this reading vlog. I'm reading the Off Campus series by Elle Kennedy, and this morning, I finished The Deal by Elle Kennedy. This is the first book in the series and it is a light enemies to lovers, kind of not enemies to lovers, it's just like bad first impression to friends to lovers. <laughs> so take with that what you will. Um, but these two love interests don't set out trying to fall in love is basically what I'm trying to say. That is the trope. It also has a smidge of fake dating in there as well because what starts our main character's relationship is our girly Hannah um, wants to date the star football player at her college, but he doesn't notice her. And then she's also in this class with one of the star hockey players who she just thinks is a douchebag and like a man whore and all these things. But he really needs her to help tutor him so he can pass the class and continue to play hockey. So they strike up this deal. The deal. Where she will tutor Garrett, the hockey player, in exchange for him kind of taking her around to parties and fake dating her in a light kind of way so it can make this football player guy jealous. Hopefully he'll notice her and then they can date. But of course, along the way, our two main characters fall more for each other. So yeah, that is the kind of blanket synopsis for this book. And going in, I did not know what to expect. I knew it was super hyped. I did not know if I was gonna like this book. And it's so funny because like my notes that I took like throughout reading this just like completely flipped. I started out, the first thing I wrote down was, holy fuck, this dialogue is painful. And that's because it was. And that is something that really continued to take me out of this book. And the reason why I did not give it a perfect reading, nor do I think it's a perfect book, is in big part due to the dialogue. It is very, very, very cringy dialogue. It feels like 
how we talked to each other in 2014, 2015. Like, oh my God, bro, that's lit fam. Like, oh my God, that's hella cool. It just feels very dated reading it now. And I was cringing at a lot of the dialogue. Something else that I didn't like that took place a lot at the beginning of the book was slut shaming. And our main character did a lot of slut shaming towards other girls. There were also just a lot of misogynistic terms thrown around like puck bunny. Um, if you know hockey culture, then you know what a puck bunny is. And yeah, I did not like that. There continued to be slut shaming throughout the whole book, but it was really, really prevalent at the beginning, which I thought was a really weird choice since a lot of this book is about our main female character's journey with coping with the rape that she experienced a few years back and coming to terms with being a survivor and what that means with her and what that means with her relationships going forward. So I just thought it was weird that there was this like slut shaming and like odd conversation about sexuality happening in the same book that there was also like a really healthy, admirable conversation about women's sexual issues, like, I don't know. And it was not just towards women, there were men that were slut shamed in this book too, and it just rubbed me the wrong way. So those are <laughs> my first two notes. The third one was, where is the hype? I think I was probably like 120 pages in, and this is only a 360 page book. And I was at this point where I was like, where's the hype? I don't get it. I don't think this is a good book. Like I'm not sold at all. But then the romance kicked in. And my next note, literally after I wrote, where's the hype? I wrote, oh, there's the hype. <laughs> because I read the scene where they kiss for the first time. And after that, the book completely changed for me. I started loving it. I started getting invested in these characters, especially our main male character, our male love interest. The way that he pined after Hannah, especially after their first kiss, oh, I think that's where the hype comes from is L. Kennedy just wrote the pining and the way he thought about her so, so beautifully. And it wasn't just like a flip, like, oh, I'm not into this girl and then they kiss and all of a sudden he is in love with her because I would not like that. It was very realistic. It was him like really thinking through how he felt about her. And you could see his ideas about relationships shifting because at first he's very much like, hockey is my life, bro. Fuck having a girlfriend, it's only a distraction. And then as the book goes on, he learns like where that idea is coming from and how it's harming him and how opening himself up to a relationship and being vulnerable can add more to his life than just being a distraction and taking away. I also love how the more that Garrett fell for her, the more we saw this sweet understanding side of him, especially when she opens up to him to the fact that she is a sexual assault survivor. He is really there for her and shows up in the ways that it's like, if you're a survivor, you want the people you're in a relationship with to show up for you. There was also a couple instances of representation of specific populations that I really enjoyed in this book. The first one obviously being survivors of rape and sexual assault. The second being therapy representation. The therapy rep in this book is great and obviously I'm a therapist and going to therapy is cool. I loved the way that our main character would like think back on her therapy sessions and said multiple times how she was able to get to a place where she could be in a relationship because of the relationship with her therapist. So I thought that was amazing. However, I do wish there would have been a conversation about Garrett getting into therapy because we learn a little bit more about his trauma as the book goes on as well. And then the last population, um, representation that I enjoyed was theater kid rap. <laughs> Our main female character is a vocal performance major and she just reminds me of a lot of people that I used to be friends with and the person that I used to be in high school when you're a theater kid. So I enjoyed parts of that and I didn't, but the representation is there regardless. But overall, the things that I enjoyed ended up outweighing the cons in this book for me. So I ended up giving it a four out of five stars. 
I absolutely loved the end. The second half of the book really just did it for me. Once Garrett opens himself up to this relationship and Hannah comes to terms with where she's at, it feels like the book just takes a totally different turn and the cringe dialogue, I was reading it and instead of like it taking me out of the story and me rolling my eyes, I was like, oh my God, I'm such a Garrett thing to say. Like I kind of liked it the more that the book went on. So four out of five, definitely a strong start to the series. I mean, anything above a three for me is a pretty good book. And next up, I'm gonna be getting into book two, The Mistake. And this one follows Garrett's best friend, Logan, who is at this point kind of into Hannah, our love interest from the deal. But apparently in the mistake, he is kind of getting over his crush on Hannah and he is falling into a thing. A sexy encounter is actually what it's called um, on the back with freshman Grace Ivers. But apparently there's a big mistake that happens in their sexy encounter and they go their separate ways. However, Grace is back at Briar after a less than stellar freshman year and she's so over this hockey player that she nearly handed her B card to. She's not a charity case and she's not the quiet butterfly she was when they first hooked up. If Logan expects her to roll over and beg like all of his other puck bunnies, he can think again. He wants her back, he'll have to work for it. Mmm, very excited to get into this one. When I'm finished, of course, I'll give you my full review. Hello, I'm back and I'm here to update you about the mistake off campus book two by l kennedy so i finished this one last night it was really short it was about a hundred pages shorter than the deal and i think the book did suffer from that it didn't feel quite as flushed out as the deal did so for that reason and a couple more reasons that i will get into i ended up giving the mistake three stars so the dynamic between our couple, their names are Grace and Logan. Like we were talking about earlier, Logan was in the last book as well. I usually don't like a dynamic between a couple, especially a heterosexual couple, where a guy is like really cocky and experienced and he's like a player. Like I just don't like that type of guy, period. But I especially don't like it when he's paired with like this virginal innocent sheltered girl i don't know something about it rubs me the wrong way i usually don't like that dynamic but in this book the way it was done i actually did like because grace our female love interest is a virgin but she's not like dumb and naive which is how i feel like most characters like that are written she is a strong woman. She will stand up for herself. And the way that she does things because she is so nervous and bumbling around with him and starting this relationship, it like kind of humbles Logan because he is this cocky playboy kind of character. And the way that she'll just be like, um, yeah, sure, I'll go to lunch really throws him off and he's like wait does she actually want to because most other girls would be like oh yes of course logan we can go to lunch and then i'll suck you off in the closet and grace is very much not like that so it kind of humbles him brings him back down to earth and i liked that dynamic however after the first about 50 pages i started noticing that my alliance was shifting towards logan rather than grace Grace's character started actively really, really getting on my nerves. And there's a lot of things that I did not like about her. And I was feeling like, girl, if you don't want Logan, like give him to me. <laughs> like I really did like Logan's character after he kind of had this big self-realization. His character completely flipped for me. And once he like did that introspection and personal work and was like, oh, this is what's motivating me. I was all in on his character. I absolutely loved him. I love that character arc. And then Grace did not do that. <laughs> it was like, I was really liking Grace and then I hated her. And then with Logan, it's like, I really didn't like him. And then I loved him. So I don't know, take with that what you will. But the thing about Grace is that she kept throwing around that she had OCD. And if you know me, you know, I do not like lazy mental health representation. So I'm like, okay, 
how does her OCD manifest? Tell me, L. Kennedy, how does her OCD affect her life? Because that's a serious psychological disorder. And I've seen people who struggle with OCD and it really does consume a lot of your life. And what it's not is exactly how it's written in this book. OCD is not, oh, I just have this compulsion to clean and everything just has to be tidy or I get so annoyed. No, and I'm not gonna explain to you exactly what it is because I will get into clinical terms and we'll be here for 25 minutes with me rambling about mental health. But the thing is, if you're going to have OCD representation or any mental health kind of representation in your book, maybe you should research what the disorder actually is, what these symptoms are because the gross misrepresentation in this book really got on my nerves. Um, like, let me, I wrote down the page numbers of like where it was talked about because I was so annoyed. I'm probably better off if I don't talk. Suddenly I'm telling guys about the time I peed my pants in third grade during a field trip or how I'm scared of puppets and have mild OCD that could possibly drive me to tidy up your room the moment you turn your head. Girl, that's not what OCD is. Ew, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. Mom doesn't keep clocks in the house because she claims time weighs my mind down, but my OCD doesn't allow me to ever relax unless I know what time it is. Th no research, none whatsoever. Also on page 179, like I was so mad I wrote it down. I had already warned her that my OCD might rear its incredibly tidy head every now and then, and so far she hasn't batted an eye when it happens. Yeah, because you're just fucking picking up your roommate's socks. Like, that is not what OCD is at all. It's an obsessive compulsive disorder. So you have an obsession that drives you to do a compulsion in order to quell that obsession. We don't hear anything about obsessions or compulsions or actual symptoms from Grace. And I hate that. I hate that a serious disorder was just thrown in there to be like, oh yeah, like she has it. Like, no, she doesn't. Straight up, she self-diagnosed herself. And then halfway through the book, she's like, you know what? I think I'm gonna declare my major and I wanna be a therapist. And I like, oh, <laughs> girl. Girl, you have a lot to learn, queen. I just, I can't, I can't imagine somebody wanting to be a therapist and then just claiming they have a mental health condition that they know absolutely nothing about. And like, she's taking psych classes. She talked about writing an abnormal psych paper. I'm like, so you know, like you've opened the DSM, girl. You know what OCD is and you're just throwing it around. Like you don't have this. So that's one of the big reasons why I hated her. But also because she held these grudges against Logan throughout the book and really made him work. And I don't think that's a bad thing. Like, yes, men should work to be in any relationship. You obviously have to put an effort, but it got to a point where it felt really manipulative. And I was just screaming, like, give him a fucking chance. Like, he's obviously proving to you that he is trying to do better. And she just like kept making him do oh, do this and then I'll go on a date with you. Oh, do this and then I'll go on a date with you. So it wasn't even like, oh, I want to guard my heart and make sure that I'm not gonna get hurt by this guy. It was more like, I'm just on this power trip because I can make him go search around the city to find me blue roses and then I'll magically go on a date with you. She knew that she liked him and she was just manipulating him and making him do these weird tasks before she went on a date with him. It just felt disingenuous and weird and the whole time throughout the book logan is dealing with like real shit like he has some family trauma and like deep issues and grace is not understanding about it at all she's just like yeah i fucking hate his family like i can't believe that and i'm like girl can you try to have like an ounce of understanding and when at the very end in their like final fight and confrontation miscommunication whatever you want to call it he is really coming to terms with this family stuff and she completely makes it about herself. Like he is breaking down and opening up to her and she's like, well, if you feel that way, then maybe we shouldn't be together. Gets mad and makes his trauma and the things that he is going through about herself. And I'm like, no, like this should not be lauded as like, oh my God, yeah, boss babe, like go off girly. Like, no, this is actually horrible that she is treating a man this way. And I know we all love to hate on men, me too. But like Logan in that moment was a vulnerable, sweet little baby angel. And for some reason, Grace saw this as like a girl boss move to like 
completely make the situation about herself and walk out on him when he needed that support. Like, I don't know, that just rubbed me the wrong way. They did come together at the end and I, I liked the way that it ended. It was sweet, the way that things got resolved, but it just felt very unbelievable after all that, that things would end up that way. And honestly, I think Logan deserves better. So overall, I had like a mixed half enjoyable, half not enjoyable time reading this book, but Logan's character and his character arc really saved the rating for me. It's the reason I'm giving it three stars instead of two. I just really wish that we weren't praising this like girl boss attitude when it's actually just like being mean. I know this is an unpopular opinion. Like, yeah, be mean to men, do whatever you want. But like, is, is that really what you want? You want to be a mean person? Like, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That's just where I'm at with my thoughts on the mistake. It was a very confusing book. <laughs> so that's that. Now I'm going to be moving on to The Score by L. Kennedy, which is following another hockey bro on the team. His name is Dean. He is like, we thought Logan was a playboy. Oh no, Dean's like hooking up with a different bitch every night. He is like the ultimate playboy of the team, never settles down, has sex in front of people, like in the living room of their house, like totally crazy. And then we're following Allie, who was Hannah's roommate from the first book, The Deal. And she was in this volatile relationship throughout the deal that has just ended at the beginning of the score. And this guy is like kind of being creepy and her ex is like coming to her dorm and like not stalking her, but like he's not leaving her alone. So Allie is like, hey, Hannah, can I stay at your boyfriend's house where all the hockey players live to like get away from this guy? Also, like I'll be surrounded by these big buff hockey players. Like he's not gonna try to come mess with me. And so Hannah's like, yeah, sure. She shows up and the only person there the day that she shows up is Dean and he's hooking up with these two girls and they have this like awkward interaction. And I'm just wondering, How's it gonna go from there? It's not like very tropey. Like there's no enemies to lovers, friends to lovers. Like there's nothing I can tell you. It's just like this playboy and this girl who just got out of a toxic relationship. And it's like, is she gonna get pulled into another one with this toxic man? I don't know, we'll find out. And I'll be back with a review. Hey, it's been a while, <laughs> three days to be exact. And in those three days, I have read three books. That's right. <laughs> Sorry for the lack of updates. Uh, I just fed read the rest of the series because, spoiler alert, uh, the score, book three, was everything to me. But before I get into talking about the reviews of these three books, I do just want to talk about something else real quick pertaining to the off-campus series. I was doing some research comparing my own thoughts on the books to other people's reviews and I was on good old book talk and while looking at reviews for the off-campus series I started to notice a lot of talk about Elle Kennedy herself, uh, the author of this series and how she is problematic and obviously there's a lot of claims thrown around about authors being problematic we know like all the shit that's being said about Sarah J Mess, and yet people still suck up the latest Akatar as soon as it comes out. So it's like, I really like to do my research and form my own opinions about things um, when these kind of scandals come up. So I'm like, okay, I'll okay, kind what you got going on? Let me look into it. And a lot of the problematic nature about L. Kennedy is that number one, people claim because of a statement that she made that she is lesbophobic. She will write homosexual relationships between male and male characters, but for some reason will not write female female relationships. And I'll go on to talk about that in a moment. And then second of all, she has been called racist and I don't like that there's just this label stuck on her without any explanation. I've looked and tried to search out some evidence of anything that she said, but I didn't really find anything. So obviously I'm not just gonna say, well, it's not true, but like if y'all know and would like to let me know, please let me know down below so I cannot support somebody who's like that. But on the issue of people calling her lesbophobic, this is the issue that I have. People are making this claim based off a tweet and I'll see if I can find it or find the comment or whatever that she made and put it on the screen. And 
she didn't have any kind of hate towards writing a female-female relationship. It seems like she supports other authors who write sapphic love stories, but for her, it's not something that she will write. And this would be a huge problem if she was saying, I refuse to incorporate lesbian characters into my books. Just like if somebody said, I refuse to write diverse characters into my book race-wise. Like, no, no Asian people can be in my book. No, no black people can be in my book. Like, stuff like that, that's obviously a big problem because these people are not tropes. They're people to be included in the world. I don't think she was trying to be hateful. I don't think that she has anything against the LGBTQ community or specifically sapphic relationships in general uh, because she seems like she's willing to include them in her books, but she just doesn't want to write a sapphic love story, which honestly, I understand. And y'all can tell me if I'm wrong here, but let me explain my thoughts. I think it's a little bit weird that a ton of straight women just like write male male love stories like romance it's like i don't know to the gay male community does it ever feel authentic to you like it feel it gives me the vibes of when like a white woman writes about the black experience like it's giving the help or like a white woman writing about an immigrant's experience it's giving american dirt like if somebody does not belong to that community and therefore doesn't want to write a half-assed piece of literature because they don't understand the community and what it's like to be in that relationship why should we be shaming them for that? Like, I don't think there's any hate, at least not that I could find, um, that Elle Kennedy has put out towards the LGBT community. She writes male-male romances and that's somewhere that she feels comfortable. However, because she's a woman who doesn't feel love for other women in a romantic sense, I can understand that it might feel inauthentic for her to write from that point of view. However, that does bring up the question, why does she feel comfortable writing from a male point of view in a homosexual relationship? Maybe it's because she does feel an attraction to a man, so it's easier to be authentic and like put herself in those shoes. But regardless, based on what I've seen, I'm not ready to scrap this video and boycott L. Kennedy. However, I do have beef with L. Kennedy. It's not about her being problematic. It's just about her being fucking weird. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, I was talking with one of my friends um, who's on booktube, Meredith Elizabeth. I'll just say it. Sorry, girl, if you don't want to be called out. And she was like, no, you need to look at this girl's TikTok like it's kind of off. And I looked at it and I got exactly what she meant immediately. There is something weird about a grown woman stitching videos of teenagers playing hockey and being like, oh my God, this is so Garrett. He's not real <laughs> this is not something garrett would do because he's a fictional character like i don't know and some of the voiceovers are just so cringy and like i don't if you want a good laugh go look at her tiktok it's a little bit cringe and i had a good little time laughing at it but with that being said i don't know about the problematic claims again i might have some flawed logic here and y'all can correct me in the comments i'm not saying what's coming out of my mouth is the bible and y'all need to attack me for having you know i'm not trying to be harmful i'm just saying like what i think that's my thought process with all of the problematicness because i thought i would be stupid to not address that like obviously if something's problematic i want to talk about it so with all that said Moving on to my reviews of these last three books in the Off Campus series, starting with The Score, which is a book about Dean, the ultimate playboy of the hockey friend group, and Allie, Hannah from the first book's roommate, who is an aspiring actress and a serial monogamous. You would think that Dean and Allie would butt heads a lot because obviously Dean's this massive playboy and Allie's this serial monogamous who just got out of this kind of toxic relationship. You don't think that they're gonna work out, obviously. Allie's gonna be trying to heal and latch on to the next person that she sees because that's her trauma pattern and Dean is not one to settle down for a relationship. But something about this book and the way that their romance developed worked so well for me i can safely say that i am a dean girl i'm a dean girl y'all i'm a freaking dean girl this is my favorite book of the series by far i gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars 
and let me tell you why. I love the amount of sex positivity and kink positivity that was represented in this book. There was none of the slut shaming that rubbed me the wrong way in the first two books at all. And the smut, in my opinion, was the best it's ever been in the score. I immediately liked Allie a lot. I connected to her character. I was rooting for her, but she didn't stay flat the entire book. She did have a great character arc as we kind of see her tackling and realizing her trauma pattern of being a serial monogamous and having trouble being on her own. I feel like this book went to a more real, genuine, raw place than any of the other books in the series. And a big part of that was Dean's character arc as well. I have to admit, at first, I hated Dean. I was not a big fan of him, but his character arc really solidified for me that I'm a Dean girl. Like, let me just read you my notes that I wrote at the very beginning of the book. I literally wrote, Dean sucks. He's only doing things in order to get sex acts out of Ali. What is this weird sex exchange? No human does this. He's like, okay, I'll hang out with you and comfort you about your breakup, but only for a blowjob? Like, isn't that harassment? What the fuck is this privileged asshole? That was my thought process at the beginning. And now at the end of the book, I'm like obsessed with this man. I love him so much. Like out of all the boys, Dean would be my pick. Like that's a hell of a character arc. Going from that to now being obsessed with him. And I feel like I don't want to give away his journey. Like I'm not going to talk you through it. I feel like you just need to read the book so you understand it and you see it. Because about the 100 page mark, something happens that really shakes Dean's world. It changes the trajectory of the entire story. It's not an annoying miscommunication. It feels like a real traumatic event that shook both of these people's lives and really everybody's lives in the whole series. There were no cheap tropes or anything like that. It was actually like emotional and raw and it helped both of the characters evolve. And it was the reason why this was the only book in the whole series that I ended up crying over. Overall, I rated the book 4.5 out of five stars. I did want to give it a five star, but after I went back and looked at the notes of how much I hated Dean at the beginning, I just felt weird about doing that, so I landed on a 4.5 out of 5. Definitely the most enjoyed book out of the series for me. And then there was a bomb dropped at the end of the book that made me want to pick up book four so fast. I literally put this book down and immediately picked up the goal because at the end of the score, Tucker, the fourth bro that we are know we're going to be following in the last book, ends up coming to the room and telling the rest of the guys that he's going to be a father. And everyone's like, what? We didn't even know you were dating anyone. And he reveals that he knocked up Dean's mortal enemy, Sabrina James. And Sabrina James hates Dean so much because he's this privileged, super rich dude and she is like from the bottom of the barrel or so she believes that her upbringing and her lack of funds her social class whatever leads her to being this like trash person so she kind of has a complex about it dean kind of has a complex about it they don't get along but secretly tucker and her start dating and the goal operates on the surprise pregnancy trope that is how this book kind of plays out and we follow them falling in love and navigating having a baby together. However, I did not like the way that Miss Kennedy wrote about Sabrina's upbringing. I thought it was going to be really refreshing to not have somebody that's just a white privileged asshole like as a main character. I thought that was going to be really great, but here are the notes that I wrote about this. The way Miss Kennedy wrote about Sabrina's life and specifically her stepdad is actually atrocious. There are ways to represent low SES environments that don't involve insulting cliches and tired tropes. And just the whole like creepy stepdad thing it, it was very very icky to read about and i get that that was the point of it but it's like not every person from the wrong side of the tracks or however way you want to put it has a weird sexual harassment stepdad like i just did not like that, that was included i every scene that had that man in it i did not like i felt like her economic situation was not talked about with tact or with nuance like it all just felt very cheap and like just insulting a little bit like obviously i'm not a very privileged person i am very 
middle class if that i grew up with just my mom in the house and my mom was a teacher my dad also was a teacher so i was living in two individual single parent households with only a teacher's salary i wasn't thriving and some of the stuff that l kennedy wrote about was just like insulting to me and i'm not even like struggling like my parents did a great job and even still i was like kind of insulted by the way that she wrote some things, if that makes sense. However, Tucker, his character was absolutely wonderful. He is so sweet, but I wasn't attracted to him at all. I didn't feel any attraction the whole book. I'm not attracted to this man. Like I'll be friends with Tucker, but he just was not the type of person that I would want to do all the dirty things Sabrina wants to do too. I was just not buying the chemistry for the majority of this book. Also, I really, really hated both of their families. Sabrina's family was obviously characterized as this like stereotypical, shitty, unsupportive, um, poor people was really how it felt like it was written. And then Tucker's mom was characterized as this stereotypical Southern person who's out of touch and homophobic and from a small town. And like the only thing she has on earth is her son. So she's gonna lash out at Sabrina just because she's there. And she honestly treats Sabrina like absolute shit. Like it was making me so mad reading about it. Like why did these people just have such shitty families? And I don't wanna give away like what happens with Tucker's mom and Sabrina, but like, she's so horrible to this girl. And then like, spoiler alert, in the legacy, when we're like catching up with all the couples, they're like, cool. I'm like, no girl, um, she treated you like absolute shit. I did not like their families in the slightest. However, I did like the discussion around pregnancy and watching them go through this. Obviously they're really young, they're my age and they're going through pregnancy and just like handling it. It was good to see that representation, but it also just like wasn't interesting to me. Like, I don't wanna read about pregnancy. I don't wanna read about babies. That's not something that I'm interested in. I find it really boring and kind of terrifying. Like, I definitely don't want a baby anytime soon. So reading about it is like not enjoyable. All the baby stuff just got to a point when it was so boring. Like we literally go through the entire pregnancy, birth, after everything with them. And I wish it would have just been an epilogue. Like I did not need to see the whole baby process. I signed up for a romance, not a book about pregnancy. Overall, this was my least favorite couple to follow and the most boring slash aggravating story. So I ended up giving it two and a half stars. I don't feel like this is a horrible book. Like, I don't think it deserves a two star, but it's definitely not a three star. You know what I mean? Like this was below average reading experience for me. So then finally, that brings us to The Legacy. And in The Legacy, it is the fifth and final off-campus book, but it is not like one whole book. It's basically four little novellas where we're kind of catching up with everything that's happened since each of the books finished with each couple. So each little novella focuses on one of the couples from the deal, the mistake, the goal, and the score. So I'm just gonna go through each novella because obviously I'm not gonna spoil anything um, and give you a rating out of 10 uh, based on how much I enjoyed it. So first we are catching up with Logan and Grace from The Mistake and I ended up giving their novella a four out of 10. I don't think the novella really added anything I don't think it changed anything, nothing evolved, and I didn't care about them whatsoever. It was entertaining, but barely. Next, we get the Dean update, and I gave that novella a 9 out of 10. It was exciting, it was cool to see how they interacted with the group, because for the majority of the score, Dean and Allie are kind of in their own little world, so seeing them with all the other characters was cool. There was a big conflict that seemed really serious, but it was resolved perfectly and it furthered the relationship. It took me on a roller coaster. It was almost perfect. Then we get our update on Tucker and Sabrina from The Goal. <laughs> and I literally gave that novella a, I wrote this down, negative 1000 out of 10. The whole thing was so stupid. It was so boring. And I could tell Miss Kennedy thought she was being like funny, like all these weird like slapstick comedy things were happening and I'm like this is not funny this is not entertaining like this is not what I signed up for I do not like this I didn't care about it it was a waste of 80 pages 
in my opinion. And then finally, we go back to the OGs, Garrett and Hannah for the update on the deal. And for that novella, I gave it a seven out of 10. I thought it had a good storyline. It showed a lot of range for both of their characters. It tackled a lot of real emotions. It felt like weighty, kind of like um, I felt in the score and in the end of the deal when things like felt like they were getting real. But I thought the last two chapters were kind of cheesy and there was just long running joke throughout the four novellas that I did not like the ending of. I did not like the inclusion of it. I thought it was so stupid. And that was kind of like a big part of the ending. And it was just not my favorite way to end this journey through five books. So that's the reason that I knocked off a few points and it ended up being a seven out of 10. So with that, <laughs> that is the recap of my journey reading the off campus series. Please let me know down below if you want to see me reading the Briar U series as well. Also, let me know your thoughts on L. Kennedy and the series. I really want to have a conversation, you know, all that. Just please nothing hateful <laughs> towards L. Kennedy. I don't want to have any like hate speech in the comments or none towards myself as well. Obviously, we're all just out here doing our best. So yeah, that's pretty much all for this video. Thanks for sticking around. Don't forget to like this video if you liked it and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.